In this video, we're going to continue on working on some counting or maybe probability practice questions. This is the second video with three questions, so this will be questions four through six. The number in, you can find the worksheet in sort of the description of the video or a link to the PDF of the worksheet and answers. Question four we're going to start with. So this says an essay exam has five questions. You're asked to answer three of the five questions. How many different ways are there to pick the questions to answer? Okay, there's some context here. Um, really that we got to think about into does the order matter or not here. So in this case what I'm going to think about is our questions. I'm just going to call them Q. We have let's say one, two, question three, question four, question five. And we have to pick three of them and then when I say order matters really the question about if order matters is is picking I'm going to say the group one, four, and five Maybe I don't want that particular sort of set symbol here. Um, is one, four, five, let's say the same, doing question one, four, and five, the same as doing question, let's say four, five, and one. So the same numbers, just in a different order, does that matter? In this case, I mean, I think you can maybe make an argument, but I would say, yes, these are the same thing. So that's our question, whoops. And I'm gonna say yes, although this is the kind of thing where if you're taking an exam or doing homework, you can ask for clarification. Um, basically, hey, is one, four, and five, doing one, four, and five, the same as doing four, five, and one. Um, this, I'm going to assume it is here. Um, and so this is really order does not matter, is the sort of take home message here kind of the key mathematical idea. Okay, so we're gonna say order doesn't matter. And now this particular one is a very like, kind of one of the most basic forms of this kind of question. And we have five things and we wanna pick three of them here. Now, there's a couple ways to do this, probably lots more than a couple here, um, but a, a few, I would say maybe a couple main ones. One is you kind of work it out step by step here. And you kind of say, well, first question, that I'm going to do is I have five choices and then second question well you already picked one of these choices so you have four choices and then third question you get three choices because you've used two of the five now what you do then is you'd multiply five times four times three but this actually doesn't work um, it's sort of incorrect here. Um, so what you'd maybe look at is five times four times three. Five times four is 20 times three is 60. Now, why is this incorrect? It's because we did not, we sort of imposed that the order did matter here. So we didn't sort of account for different orderings. And when I say that, what I mean is that, well, I could have done question one and then question four and then question five here. So if I picked question one first, I have four choices for the second one, I happen to say four, and then I have five choices for the third after I've picked one and four. So we could count one, four, and five in this order, but also the second grouping we have, you could do a four, a five, and a one. And you've sort of counted that as well. So what we need to do is figure out, well, how many different ways could we pick questions one, four, and five? Like how many different orders can we do that? Well, we have three things. How many ways can you order three things? That's a three factorial. So what you get really is, it's really 60 divided by three factorial, and that three is to account for orderings, really the orders of things. So this is 60 divided by three factorials, three times two times one, that's 60 divided by six, that's 10. Okay. So I said a couple ways to do this. This is one here. 10 is actually gonna be the correct answer. This way isn't probably the way I would do this. I think it's a little bit more cumbersome. It's not gonna scale particularly as well. Imagine you have a question. Well, okay, the other method probably isn't either in reality, but computationally it'll be simpler with certain tools. But imagine you have a question that's like, oh, I've got 100 exam questions and I wanna pick 15 of those. So I really want to go multiply 15 numbers out. Uh, it gets a little bit cumbersome here. Even just writing it down is going to be a little bit awkward. So the other method, um, I 
I'm gonna go over here, I guess. So here's sort of method two. And this is probably what I would do based on my preferences here. And what this is, is I'm gonna use a what I'm gonna call a binomial coefficient. Um, and I believe that a lot of places are gonna use the term here and call these combinations as opposed to permutations here. So the idea here is if I have, there's just sort of a formula, which is the number of ways to pick k out of n objects is, and okay, there's different notations to write this. You might see it written as n, capital C, K, it's more thinking in terms of the combinations sort of term. What I am used to is writing this as N over K, kind of like a fraction. I think the first time I saw these, it confused me because I'm like, oh, they're fractions, but they didn't print the bar in between. It's like, no, there is no horizontal bar. It's just a different notation that sort of looks like a fraction. Here, there's probably some other notations as well, but what this is, is this is N factorial over K factorial times n minus k factorial here. So this is just sort of a formula you can memorize. This shows up a lot of times or in a lot of places. Um, there's a little bit of a weirdness here, I would say, in that you have this prefix by, which says two, and you look at this and you're like, okay, maybe you think right away there are, there's n and k, that's two things, that's why it's two, but that's not actually where the two comes from. And this is really weird. The two comes from because we have two things underneath. Now, k is just one thing. What's going on is really this, I'll just write it over here, and, oh, and a verbalization of this. I would say this as n choose k here. So when I was gonna write this, I was gonna say n choose k here, this n over k with no, it's not really a fraction here. It's just n over k. This is the same thing as there's another notation where I can write this as n, k, and then a comma, n minus k. And this sort of second one, this is a multinomial coefficient. Well, it's a binomial, but it'll generalize into a multinomial coefficient here. And why multinomials? You don't have to just have two things here. And so it turns out if you do n, and then you want to do, oh, let's just put down a, b, c, I'll do four of them underneath. What this is, is this is n factorial over a factorial times b factorial times c factorial times d factorial, but there's a catch here, is that we must have a plus b plus c plus d equal to n here. And what's going on here is this binomial coefficient is the number of ways to split n things into two groups and sort of a four, I don't know, a tetranomial, quatrinomial coefficient, having four um, things on the bottom in a multinomial coefficient is the number of ways to split, let's say, n things into four groups where one group has size a, one group has size b, one group has size c, one group has size d. Okay, so that's just sort of the, the terminology and sort of how you can count things with this. It's a really nice generalization here. It lets you do a lot more problems. So another issue here, when I said a binomial coefficient, this n choose k, is the number of ways to split n things into two groups. In our problem, we're only picking one group. Well, the second group, I mean, is really the things not chosen. So essentially, we had those five questions. We're splitting them into one group of three questions we're going to answer in another group of two questions we're not going to answer. So you sort of partition those, all five of the original questions into two separate groups. Okay, a lot of talking, but let's actually do the computation here. So in our case, we had five questions and we wanted to pick three of those. Choose three to do. So this is just five choose three. And with our formula, this is five factorial over three factorial times five minus three factorial, that's two factorial. Here. Okay, now this, 
there's a temptation when you want to evaluate this to do five factorial. Well, I'll just write it out here and we'll talk about the temptation when it's a little more clear. Five times four times three times two times one over three times two times one times two times one. So there's a temptation to go and multiply out, say, the entire numerator and multiply the entire denominator and sort of cancel those. One thing that's nice here is you will get a whole number in the end all the time, so things will cancel out completely. But what I'd suggest is don't multiply these out, you know, the whole numerator. Cancel things first. So what we get is threes cancel, twos cancel, well, ones don't even matter. Their times one doesn't change. I sort of canceled some there. And then the two on the bottom sort of cancels with the four on the top becomes a two. So five times two, that's the same 10 that we got using the other method. Okay, so two ways to do this. I'll say one thing in these counting problems is sometimes they're a little bit tricky and you can make subtle mistakes here. It's nice to be able to have more than one method to do a problem because then if you agree, well, decent chance that you're correct. I guess you could have made two mistakes that you know, like sort of correspond. If you don't agree, you know at least one of those is wrong. I guess they could both be wrong. But you know, it's sort of a nice check if you've got sort of extra time on an exam or you're just trying to learn and want to do things different ways. Next question. Oops, quarter shot. Okay, very similar. Um, this says part A of an exam has five questions and then part B has six questions. You are asked to answer three questions from part A. So that's basically the question we just did is how many ways to do that are there? And three questions from part B. So that's a little bit of a twist. We wanna know how many different ways are to depict the questions to answer. So what we're gonna do here is there's sort of two things to do and this is gonna be a multiplication situation because they're sort of independent from each other. So we're gonna get number of ways to pick or choose the part A questions. We're gonna do that and we're gonna multiply that by number of ways to choose, whoops, the part B questions. Okay, should say something about terminology here. I'm using choose and pick. You'll get some people who want pick to be permutation and choose to be combination. I don't really sort of believe in that kind of thing. I think we'll use them interchangeably in English. I just did here. Um, I, w I wouldn't recommend getting hung up on those words, although given certain situations, if that's the way questions are always asked, you can use that to your advantage to get you know, higher scores on exams. I don't know that it really helps your understanding, but might work out in a certain scenario. Okay, so let's look at this. And now this is where, to me, like this binomial coefficient thing is I think really helpful here, or just seems a lot quicker to me. But maybe that's just what I'm used to. So part A, where there are five questions, and we need to pick three of those five. So what we get is the number of ways to pick our questions for part A, five total, pick three of them. And we're gonna multiply that by another binomial coefficient. Uh, number of ways to choose part B. Part B has six questions, and we need to pick three questions from part B as well. So we get five choose three times six choose three here. So what you get is five factorial over three factorial times two factorial times six choose three is six factorial over three factorial times six minus three is three factorial. So what we get is five times four times three times two. I'm gonna start leaving off the ones because multiplying by one doesn't change anything. Three factorial is three times two. Two factorial is just two. Six factorial is six times five times four times three times two. And three factorial is three times two. And another three factorial is also three times two. And then we start our sort of cancelization here. So three cancels three cancels, two cancels, two cancels. I've got a two there still. Um, I can cancel that two with the four and get a two. This is five times two is 10. We could have just reused that answer from the last question. Uh, the second factor here, let's see, we have a three cancels with a three, a two cancels with a two. Three times two is six. I can just cancel that with the six. So what I'm 
end up with is 5 times 2 is 10, times 5 times 4 is what's left is 20, so in the end our answer is 200. Okay, one more for this session here. And a similar question. We have a group of 13, from a group of 13 people, how many ways are there, are there to pick one person to be a president, a different person to be vice president, and a third person to be a secretary? So you're like doing a club or something and you need to have these positions, like how many different orderings there are, there are here. And the key difference here is in this case, I'm like picking three people out of 13, but the order of the three people matters. So this, uh, that's terrible writing. Um, let me write that out a little more clearly. So the order of the three people matters in this case. So we get a little bit different feel. If the order didn't matter, or just, hey, pick three people, a committee of three people out of 13, it would just be 13 choose three. And then you could go calculate what that number is exactly. Um, but because the order matters here, I mean, the thing, I mean, not because, but like what that means really, or how we know that, is that person A as president, person B as vice president, and person C as secretary, this is different. So that combination is not the same as, let's say, C as president, let's say B, keep them in vice president, and A as secretary here. So we wanna say these two are different sort of ways that this sort of choice could come out here. Whereas before, if we're picking three questions, like do question two first and question four second and question five third would be the same as question five first and four second and two third, if I got the numbers of those questions right. Um, that would be, you know, we're saying sort of it doesn't really matter in that case, but here we're saying it does. Okay, so this one, I don't think there's this as nice of a binomial coefficient kind of setup here be quick, but I think generally these ones I just kind of do by hand. Here, thinking out there, there's ways you can kind of convert though. Um, but I'm just gonna go through this one is number of ways to choose. And let's see, first is gonna be president. And I'm gonna then, once we've chosen a president, how many ways can we choose the vice president, and then we're going to multiply that by number of ways to choose, I'm just going to say the secretary here. Okay, so this, well, number of ways to choose a president, there are 13 people, so got 13 choices. Now, when we write number of ways to choose the vice president here, we're meaning amongst the 12 people that are left. So we started with 13, we picked a president, now we're gonna do vice president, that's gonna be 12. And then the number of ways to choose a secretary, we've chosen two people already to be in certain roles, so that leaves 11. So this is 13 times 12 times 11. Now oh, I wish I'd worked this out beforehand. Let's see, 13 times 12 is 156. 12 times 12 is 144 with another 12, gives us 156 times 11. So then I get five, one, five, six, Zero plus one five six six one one five six seven. That looks like seventeen sixteen. Here, um, although in reality I'd probably just do this multiplication on a calculator. Hopefully, you're in a situation where you can use at least a you know four function calculator, if not something more complicated, um, to do these kinds of computations because it really shouldn't be about your arithmetic skills. But nice to be able to do it. Okay, so seventeen sixteen is what we get. I just want to point out though the difference between this question six and question four, and we sort of did question four the first way here. Note, we did 13 times 12 times 11, but in question four, we divided by three factorial. Here, well, it was five times four times three in that case, but we divided by a factorial because the ordering did not matter. So we wanted to sort of do A, B, C being different than C, B, A. So we sort of divide by the number of ways to take three um, letters, A, B, C, and just rearrange them. So I'll just go back to that just to point this out what I'm talking about here is really just this part where I did the divide by six by three factorial here. So this five times four times three, this looks exactly, so this first bit here, 
black, this first bit here is pretty much exactly what we just did, except we're using we were using 13 instead of 5 here. But because it was just pick any three and we just wanted them as a group and the order didn't matter, that's why you divide by three factorial. So it's these little differences you can forget where it's nice to do things in different ways here. How do we get the answer? If you really wanted to um, do this uh, sixth one is a, like a binomial coefficient to get a different way, is what I would do is I would, okay, we have picking three people. So I'm going to do choose three officers, except I'm going to hopefully spell that correctly. Choose three officers, so three people to be officers, times choose roles for each officer. So you can do this in a binomial coefficient. I'm just saying this feels a little bit, a little less natural to me, and I'm struggling with the spelling for some reason. Okay, so you could do this this way. And then the idea of these choose the three people who are going to be officers, this is really the 13 choose three. And then choose the roles for each officer well, let's really just permute those three people. So essentially, if I have three people, they're my officers. Any ordering of them, where you say, okay, the first one in the order is the president, the second one, the vice president, the third one, the secretary, or do the first one, secretary, and the second one, president, and third one, vice president. Just fix an order. It doesn't matter which one. Um, but we really get 13 choose three to choose the three officers, three officers, and then three factorial to choose the roles for each officer. And then this... 13 factorial over 3 factorial over 3 factorial. And this 3 factorial I can write as 3 factorial over 1. Note, we get a cancelization of the factorial. We don't even have to expand that. And what I'm left with is, now this is, oh, sorry, and I've messed this up here. Um, I was looking at this, and I'm like, wait, this is where doing this multiple ways can be really helpful. Here's I'm looking at, well, if I do 13 factorial, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 13 times 12 times 11 times 10, times 9, blah, blah, blah. First of all, this is annoying to write out. But second of all, not all this is going to cancel, and not large parts of it. And I'm like, well, I already did this, and it was different. What happened? So I made a mistake here. And what's the mistake is I got going too quickly, and I did my binomial coefficient incorrectly. So here, this whole thing, I'm just going to cross out this bit here. And what I get is 13 choose 3 is 13 factorial, go a little more slowly, 3 factorial, and then 13 minus 3 factorial. So this is where I just wrote another 3 factorial, but 13 minus 3, that should be a 10 factorial. And then a 3 factorial over 1. I think I got too excited about being able to cancel a 3 factorial, so I got in my head or something. Okay, so this, now the 3 factorial still cancel. Uh, and then what I get, and now this looks more intimidating here, is this is 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's 13 factorial. Over 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All right, so do not go through this, I guess, unless you really like doing a lot of arithmetic, don't try and multiply all the numbers on the top together and then multiply all the numbers on the bottom together and then do a division. You're going to get giant numbers and it's going to be a mess. Cancel before you do that. So this cancels really nicely because on the bottom you have a 10 and a 10. A factor of 9, a factor of 9. A factor of 8, a factor of 8. 7 and a 7. A 6 and a 6. 5 and a 5. A 4 and a 4. 3 and a 3. A 2 and a 2. And I guess the 1's here. So you end up with this 13 times 12 times 11, um, which was, and I'm just going to cheat because I did that already, it looked like we got 17, 16. Here. So you get the same computation in the end. Now, this looks kind of scary here, writing out all these numbers. <clears throat> I'll just say that once you get used to this and you see 13 factorial over 10 factorial, is you can write, if you think about it, 13 factorial, let me just do it this way, over 10 factorial, 
I write my 13 factorial as 13 times, oops, 13 times 12 times 11, and then I know I'm going to do 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 and so on, but the rest of this I can write as just 10 factorial. So without having to write it out, I know that's 10 times 9 times 8, and it's just going to keep going down. So if you do this conversion where 13 factorial is 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 factorial, or 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 factorial, or wherever you want to stop that's convenient, here I chose to stop with a 10 factorial, because now whatever 10 factorial is, I can cancel those out. And I get this 13 times 12 times 11. So you don't really need to write out all these factors. There's a sort of a simpler way to do this.